it's time to learn the best deck in the format, Doomsday. However, I felt like we need to put a little bit of a Justin spin on it. This is not a meme, this is the real thing. Tinker Doomsday. Greetings, vintage gamers. It is time to show you the most horrific monstrosity I have been working on. Uh, I actually placed 10th place in the last 3 a.m. challenge with a very, very similar list. This is Tinker and Doomsday. Um, Doomsday is the best deck in the format right now, uh, and I'm probably going to be learning how to play exactly Doomsday as well. Uh, but first, I thought we should shake things up a bit. I don't think the Doomsday list has really been iterated on in any significant capacity in, in a couple of years now. Um, and that doesn't mean that it is 100% correct. It's something that I've been really interested in is seeing how we could fit Tinker into the deck. I think that between Doomsday and Tinker Citadel, you have probably two of the best combo-oriented pieces in Vintage. And so I've been looking at ways to combine them. Um, the biggest problem uh, that you'll face when you try to combine these two strategies is the Tinker deck wants full Moxin, and the Doomsday deck doesn't care about off-color Moxin. And so you need to really come up with ways uh, to utilize your non-blue-black Moxin. And what I've chosen to do for that is play as many Sensei's Tops as possible. Sensei's Top actually um, quite good with Doomsday itself and breaking into piles. Uh, and uh, obviously acting as a pseudo cantrip to find uh, pieces you're looking for. It's a great use of off-color Moxin. Uh, and it also combines very well with Bolus's Citadel. Uh, so that's the thing that has impressed me the most have been these tops, and they are basically the single best way for us to utilize uh, the off-color Moxin in the deck. Uh, I have, of course, added like some other cards that feature um, uh, colorless uh, in their mana costs. So I have Merchant Scroll here. I have Yogwill, Tinker, uh, Repeal. And um, I was trying out a bunch of different 1x cantrips like Predict and Night's Whisper. The biggest problem with Night's Whisper is that it doesn't call, isn't a blue spell. And then you start to like lose, your, lose, out, lose out on your blue count, which is already suffering um, from the additional Moxin and additional uh, tops. We do hit a pretty reasonable 11 artifacts for Tinker, which is not too, too bad. It's a little low, but you are, you are you know, still a cantripping deck. Um, Revealing a Doomsday off of your Citadel is almost always a guaranteed win. Um, so you actually are probably one of the best Citadel decks in the entire format. Between three tops and so many instant wins, uh, Doom, Doom, uh, this Citadel deck is actually very, very, very good uh, at doing the Citadel thing when you resolve it. Uh, which is not a huge consideration, but it is um, something to think about. Um, and besides that, uh, nothing too crazy. Still keeping Thassa's Oracle Demonic Consultation as a really w good way to do a backup win. Uh, and sometimes you even win in Citadel doing Thassa's Oracle Demonic Consultation as well. Um, it's not 100% tuned yet. I still would like to figure out a way to turn these preordains into 1x blue draw spell style cards. Um, but for now, we'll just play with two preordains. Um, and then in the sideboard, you get to utilize some uh, higher mana cost cards that Doomsday couldn't, couldn't typically cast. So things like Hercules Recall instead of Steel Sabotage. Uh, things like Virtue's Ruin instead of like Soul Rend or, or, or cards like that. Um, and so basically we just have uh, three different removal spells for Mono White. Uh, Sphinx, Leyline, and Tabernacles for Graveyard decks. Opposition Agent for the Mirror. Hercules Recall for the Artifact decks. And then an additional two Negation, one Trap for Combo decks. Our deck is a little bit worse against Combo than a typical Doomsday list uh, because you are playing less Fluster Storms, no Negations and Traps in the main or anything like that. Uh, but you do have really nice con concrete avenues to win between your mystical and your vampiric for tutor uh, and demonic for tinker. You do play all basically all the powerful cards uh, that you would normally see in a tinker based shell, uh, like a PO deck or a, a saga deck that makes your tinker really strong. Are, are the things with the like uh, vampiric, mystical, and demonic? Uh, so yeah. I think this deck is fun, uh, and it's a nice little departure from typical Doomsday. If I can't ever get this deck to work at the capacity that I would really hope for, um, then I'll just play some regular Doomsday. But so far, um, the Doomsday shell itself and the core of Doomsday is so broken that I don't think it truly matters what you choose to use in your last 
you know, eight flex slots or however many flex slots there are. Uh, and I certainly am open to the idea that we can try to fit uh, something as powerful as Tinker into a deck like this. So we'll see how it goes for this vintage challenge. See you in round one. If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. Okay, here we go. Round one of six 49 players today for Vintage. I have got turn one Necro with Flusterstorm backup, Mental Misstep, and Ancestral Recall. Uh, yeah, keep. Necro is a card that I have had. I've had it in the main. I've cut it. I brought it back. It's not amazing, but it is powerful, and I think typically worthy of a spot. It's hard to use. It's nice with Citadel sometimes. Um, you could also theoretically do something like play a ring in this slot, or two rings. Um, one of the problems with the ring is if you don't have your fast mana, you don't have your Moxin, then it's really, really bad. But I guess if you don't have your Dark Ritual with your Necropotent, it's really, really bad. So maybe a little bit here, a little bit there. Like... It will be an interesting question how much I necro for here when I have access to so many good cards already. But another thing to note is that this necro plays directly into Mindbreak Trap. Um, everyone and their mother is playing a large pile of Mindbreak Traps in their 75s right now. Some are playing as many as four in the main, uh, which makes it very hard to play any kind of Tinker or Doomsday or combo deck. Um, because you have to be cogn cognizant and mindful of that and try to pick your spots a little bit more than you before. A lot of times in previous videos across the years, you'll have you'll see me say, I'm not playing around Mindbreak Trap. They have a one of Mindbreak Trap. Sometimes you'll just, I'll just lose to it. Um, you can't really make that call as often when your opponents are playing more than one Mindbreak Trap. If there's a high probability your opponent has a Mindbreak Trap in their hand, it's sometimes, you know, it's going to be more correct to play around it, so... I mean, what we really should consider right now is how many cards am I drawing with this Necropotent? We're at least going down to three, so we're at least drawing four. I would say we're probably drawing five or six. But, like, there's almost no chance that I want to get rid of any of these three cards, so. It's likely we're going to draw, like, six cards, I think, and then discard two. It's going to be quite a few, I would say. I would think. I would really like to have... Basically, what I would like to have after I Necro here is a hand that adds Force of Will, adds a Mana Source, and it adds um, a combo or a Tutor for a combo. So I think, like... One of the best outcomes is something like Force Lotus Tinker or a Tutor for Tinker or something like that. Saga is a good way to lose your vintage games. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I, I I just don't believe in the construct kill, so it's just too slow. I like did what you said what you're saying in chat recently where like i i used the saga and played around mind break trap and my opponent just untaps and kills you so it's just like not a very strong use of your resources typically um there's no reason for me to fetch first right i don't think so Um, I mean, you can, if that's something that you're interested in doing, you can play Collector Roof. Like, Collector Roof is not an embarrassing card right now with so much jewel existing. Um, I lost pretty badly to a, um, a Bant Luris deck in the prelim uh, yesterday. So, you can totally do something like that. Uh, I typically just don't, un I don't really personally get the idea of playing fair in a in a format where you can play combo <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me uh i would rather just do the thing i i i think you should always do the broken thing so what's up aloha welcome back I don't know. 
but like p people enjoy and thrive in magic in different ways so i wonder if there's any world where we get an island here i don't think so we're gonna draw so many cards that if they're wastelanding us do we care i don't think you should buff fair decks i think fair decks are fine I just don't think I just I just don't understand the logic behind playing a fair deck. Like, it doesn't work for me. Like, if you see Collector Roof as giving you tons of free wins, then sure. Play the cards that give you free wins. But all right, I'm gonna draw at least six cards here. I think that the answer is gonna be seven cards. Uh I lost count. See, I cracked, so I was at 19, so I've drawn five. I don't know, this is like seven cards, right? All right, so we have a land, we have a tutor, we have... So the only thing we didn't hit here is we didn't hit uh, the force. I'm just going to get rid of this vamp and this top. So we can, you know, our opponent can untap and kill us here. They did reveal they're a Force of Will Mystical deck. And we didn't hit a Force of Will of our own. But we do have a misstep, so there's some um, something something there. All right, Flooded Strand. So all I really want to do here next turn is cast Tinker. Maybe not even Tinker. We're at 12. Maybe it's just Doomsday with Flusterstorm back up. Um, I'm just going to misstep this. Might even be playing the Mirror. This just looks like Doomsday with Flusterstorm Ancestral. Uh, so Doomsday costs... So I actually can't play this all with Flusterstorm backup. Because I get Doomsday, I cast it for three. And then I have to break the pile with Ancestral. I guess I don't have to break the pile with Ancestral. I technically have a Necro. I don't think they have anything at all. So I don't think it matters much what we choose to do. But I think it'll just be a very normal pile of at least a Black Lotus. Wait, what? Oh my god, Justin. I wasn't in Doomsday yet. I was in Demonic. <laughs> Uh, that's fine. I was looking at chat and thinking, and I just forgot we didn't even get the Doomsday yet. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. No worries. <laughs> Fuck! It's so bad. It's not fine. Uh, streaming is hard, man. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. We have draw five here. So. <laughs> I still hit no forces. <laughs> we might lose this game now, though. It's definitely possible. Looks like we're playing the mirror. They went bottom, bottom, pass. Uh, I don't see any reason not to just brainstorm now. Okay, so we, now we have Force Doomsday. Yeah, this should be totally fine. Should we? I guess we can even. Probe first. So I want to untap. No draw. Crack away. I mean, cracking cracking just gets us a land. And it's fine because we're going to go to two anyway. Oh, uh, two. Then we'll pay life. Or sorry, we'll pay mana and probe just to see what they have. And then we'll go Doomsday down to two with force and fluster back up. 
and then we can draw through our pile with repeal. So everything is fine. I guess they could theoretically have like fluster force blue card mind break trap or something. But all right. I actually am pretty happy that we not pretty happy. I'm obviously upset we didn't win the game on the spot, but <laughs> uh, I definitely think what we kind of guaranteed our opponent to be on Doomsday uh, by seeing Ponder pre or by seeing Preordain here. So we definitely learned at least something. Uh, but yeah, I, I think what I was going to do there was just Doomsday for a typical like Oracle and uh, Oracle pile uh, and just ancestral into it. I guess I could, like, there's, like, no way to build. I'm trying to figure out if there was, like, any ways to build redundancy in the pile that, the initial pile off of the demonic. Like, we have the necro, obviously, so if they counter the ancestral, we can still, like, necro on the next turn and, you know, necro into the oracles and stuff. So it doesn't really matter if we are, if our ancestral got, like, dazed or something. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, what like plays around the most things, but it probably didn't matter considering our opponent was F6 anyways. So I think our opponent is on Doomsday. I'm going to bring in the opposition agent. Necro certainly looked amazing in that game. Um, can't, can't, uh, can't be mad at Necro there. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you just don't need to Necro if your ancestral resolves, right? So like, what you can do is ancestral break your pile and go for the win. If ancestral if ancestral gets countered, you can set up your pile so that you can necro into force, so that you have force on your opponent's turn, and then you untap an oracle with force backup, right? Because you can't draw your cards with the necro if they if my if my ancestral is my only way to break into my pile, I, and I can't draw the cards the same turn with the necro, right? So I can just like make my top three cards. I don't know, uh, force force blue card oracle or something like that and just draw them all so that I can force on their turn and untap an oracle. You know, something like that. Um, I don't know if we care about opponent having creatures at all. I kind of think I typically just don't care. Uh, but I could ke technically keep repealing if I wanted to. I definitely want to cut island and like mystical and mana crypt and uh like vamp maybe i know this is like what i would normally cut in the doomsday mirror but that doesn't seem as good if i have tinker but tinker is pretty hard to resolve so maybe i'll just cut these things and we'll call that reasonably maybe i'm going to keep vamp and i'll just trim a top or a or or a dark ritual or something like that Because it's not as much of a counterspell war as an actual Doomsday Mirror would be, because I'm not, I'm a little bit more all in than my opponents. His hand looks fine. Draws Sapphire, it's a turn one win. Seven cards, see you go. Days. Uh, I think just firing off our uh, ritual doomsday here would be a poor use of resources. Just gonna pass. This is an end of turn vamp, that's fine. I think I'm going to actually fetch now, just so I don't get crazy opposition to Ancient Blind. So, like, a typical Doomsday Mirror, the first one who, like, goes off and, lose, uh, and loses a counter war is going to, you know, be in, a, in the worst spot. I'm not really sure all the heuristics for a Doomsday Mirror apply here, where I am typically more all-in, but... Emerald lets me play Hardcast Negation, which is not nothing, but obviously it's not something. Uh, but Emerald does give us a way for Repeal to break the pile, so. Sure.
So next turn, we technically have Doomsday with Force and Daze back up and a way to break the pile. Top, bottom, Lotus. I wonder if there's like a lot of value in casting Repeal on this Lotus. If they break it to counter my Repeal, then we just got rid of their Lotus for Repeal. And if they don't, then they don't have as much stuff and we just kind of need a Flusterstorm. But I guess at that point we would need a... um. Another way to break the pile as well. It's kind of interesting. If I felt like this was the turn that I was going to go off, I might repeal the Lotus. But the problem is I still don't beat Flusterstorm. And I won't have a way to break the pile. So I just don't think that makes sense. I mean, playing the Lotus out makes tons of sense if you don't have those things because you have to be able to beat Flusterstorm, right? I mean, uh, normal Doomsday decks don't play Hole Breacher because it's a hard mana cost to pay for. If anything, it'd be like an Orcish Bowmaster or an Opposition Agent. All right, so they are missing a land drop. I still don't think I'm supposed to do anything. Just gonna draw one more here. Another ritual. It's not great. Hmm. I don't really know how to progress this game. I guess maybe two rituals lets us play through fluster storms, but it just feels very very hard to go for anything here. If I repeal this and they don't break it, they will have to discard a card. I think I'm going to use this repeal. Okay, so I drew a lotus and they have to discard just hand size. Okay. Another fetch. Well, now I don't have a way to break my pile, though. But maybe what I can do is just cast this Doomsday. Doesn't even look that bad. I don't even need to fight over it really okay so i would like to build probably the most redundant pile possible i would think something like gosh or gush two oracles another doomsday at the end or even a yagwell at the end yagwell's kind of interesting what if i do like gush time walk oracle oracle yagwell I don't like this idea. Uh, for what it's worth, I'm not going to go like too crazy on building piles in the stream. I'm going to just do what makes sense to me in the moment. Something that, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to like just fire off random piles, but I'm not going to try to deliberate too crazy or even I would like to try to not read chat at, at not at all, but like for the most part. Um, one of the biggest problems with me streaming Doomsday is it's hard to do my normal back and forth with chat because I have to do more thinking, and I definitely am not as comfortable with the thinking that I'm doing. So um, my logic here is if my opponent has seven cards in hand and they're all counter spells, um, I want to give myself the most possible opportunities to successfully resolve Athafa's Oracle uh, and Gush 
into time walk oracle oracle yagwill just feels like the best way to do that so i'm gonna try this um and we'll see how it goes uh, i'm gonna put yagwill on the bottom followed by oracle oracle time walk gush okay and then i have to survive this turn uh and i have some amount of counter magic here and i have rituals to help me pay for um like a fluster storm so maybe in an okay spot the rituals go like okay um yeah i just let the lotus go so i think if my opponent passes the turn what i'll do is i'll gush time walk and then i'll pat and then go to my next turn um that way i'm not playing into mind break trap and then i'll go oracle oracle and see what happens what if my opponent goes for the for the throat here and tries to do their own combo we're just gonna have to make choices necro <sighs> necro huh So this is going to like guarantee my opponent has a handful of counter magic, right? Or that's what they're going to try to do. And then we have to figure out like, does our hand beat a handful of counter magic after this? I'm not really sure, actually. That doesn't seem like a good thing for us. I kind of want to... Like, there's not, it's not terrible for me to negate this. I'm, I'm going to let it go. I think our hand should beat Necro, but we'll see. I'm not sure if it does. I, I haven't been in this spot before, so I just don't know. We have so much mana, too. The thing is, we should really, like... Um, I should just yield on this. Um, I should look at a, a Doomsday list. Like, a normal Doomsday list. I think it's, like, one trap, two negation. Like, what's Discover End's last list, I guess? One, two trap, two negation, or flusters, or three or four flusters. All right, well, let's see how this goes. I'm interested. We should have, like, the ability to beat Fluster Storms, right? I do think we need to try to play around Trap to, like, a high degree, though. I'm not sure. I, I could have countered this Necro. It's not unreasonable, I think, to counter the Necro, but I, I just don't know. Not sure. My opponent went to 16 cards in hand. And then I assume like they'll end up passing with seven. Like they either have to go a full grip of counter magic to try to beat me with only counter magic or like just enough counter magic so they can untap and kill me. I'm not 100% sure. I think I, if I was the opponent's spot, if my 16 card was good enough, I would try to keep a hand where my win condition was my opponent drawing out, right? Yeah. So maybe they're trying to still win, right? Like, if, they're, if their goal is to beat me via counter spells, I think what they should have done is fetched and then drawn down to two life i mean you don't want to go to two life because that uh that makes it so you can't play double forcible right so maybe three or four life or something i guess we do need to think about opponents ancestral as well that's fair we can't win with oracle and be 
safe against ancestral either, right? But the thing is, if their if their hand was if they were trying to grab like six counters ancestral, then wouldn't they draw more cards? I'm like starting to feel I shouldn't have let Necro resolve. <laughs> uh, so my opponent got rid of Street Wraith Ritual, Demonic Jet, Doomsday. So I assume they're going counter mode. Uh, I'm definitely just going to float blue mana and cast Gush. Some very uh, high power necro games. Most necro games I don't find go quite like this. So if I want to play around Mind Break Trap, the absolute best thing I can do is Time Walk, right? Because Time Walk lets me go Oracle, Oracle. And if my opponent... Um, And then I, and then I, my opponent, if my opponent successfully counters both oracles, I can still pass again and then go for Yogwo on the next turn if I want to. The problem with casting oracle first is I'm opening myself up to Mind Break Trap, right? And also, the later I cast the Time Walk, the worse it is against Flusterstorm. I, yeah, I just don't agree. I think I would rather time walk first. Like, I can't imagine they fight over this time walk, right? And then I get to untap in a spot where my oracles are in a better, better versus their counter suite. I think that's just better. I shouldn't F6 because my opponent could go for like an end step ancestral here. Like if they force this, I just let the force go and then I cast a second one. I could also, I also have the ability to like daze and replay an island too if we need to. All right, so here's force pitching something. Force pitching Oracle. Okay. This is Force pitching misstep. Three cards left in hand. So. Oh, no, I played land for turn. You're right. I think we just say this is okay, and then we go to our, our following turn and go for the win on, on, our, on our next turn here. The problem, if we go for Yogg next turn, are we just cracking Lotus and not playing any spells and casting Yogg? Probably. Yeah, all right. I mean, I think this is just fine. I mean, that's the, I think at this point, that is the way I set up this whole thing to work. And so if I choose not to go for this line, it just feels, feels like I didn't set myself up to win, right? Like, what's my opponent going to do here? They're going to draw like three more cards with their Necro and we're still going to kill them? Kind of an interesting game, huh? I really should stop F6 in case my opponent draws a freaking uh, Ancestral Recall, huh? I don't think I'm casting these Dark Rituals beforehand. I think I'll cast one Oracle start. 
uh, because they can't have force of will. They can only have negation, mind break trap. So this is negation pitch ponder. So I think we just hard cast negation versa, right? Or maybe so they have mind break trap, right? So I don't want, don't want to cast dark ritual first. I mean, if they have like how many cards do they have? Four cards. If they have like mind break trap, mind break trap, fluster, fluster, it's like pretty bad for us, right? Is there any point in, in like holding days, or should I just like force this pitching days? I guess they didn't hard cast negation, so they definitely have fluster storm. So if I force this uh, and they fluster, I can technically pay without using dark ritual. Then they could mind break trap my lotus. Force pitch days. All right, try to resolve Yagwell. All if I lose everything up by the end of this, I can still go Lotus Doomsday if I didn't get both Oracles trapped, right? I mean, I can still Dark Ritual Doomsday as long as I have one black mana. Oh, wait, no. If the cards go in the yard, they get exiled with Yagwell, right? So that, that won't work. I could like start with Doomsday if I wanted to or something. I could keep one Oracle in the yard and then go for Doomsday. Wow, they're going to tap out for a negation. Now I feel stupid. So I just lose to Mindbreak Trap, right? It's unfortunate. So how could I have played around this if I had hard cast negation and held open day's force? I didn't play around negation, uh, pitch ne and then hard cast negation. But I feel like playing around Fluster made the most sense, right? All right. Wow, they didn't have it. Holy crap. So play Lotus. Crack Lotus for blue. Play Oracle. Unless my opponent has a Mind Break Trap still. Man, I wish these were blue cards, because then we could alternate cast force, right? Or no? Maybe. So I think my opponent still has a Mind Break Trap, and they were playing around... Okay. Days we just pay for... So... How much blue do I have? I have three blue. So I could... So I think what I'm going to do is do ritual, ritual, and then pay using... Or sorry, do ritual, pay using my black. And then if their last card is Mind Break Trap, I can negate it. And if they have another counter spell, I can cast Doomsday and put the last Oracle back in my yard, my library. So ritual. Though I guess if they trap the stack now, I still have ritual Doomsday. I think they have a trap and they are slow rolling it to play around Flusterstorm. But I um because I only showed them two fluster storms in my exile pile here. Um that's because I only have two fluster storms. But I could have four fluster storms, right? Second days. 
So they have one card left and it can be trap. I can't beat that though, right? Wait, no, I can just pay with my floating mana here. No, 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 I pay with my floating mana, and then if they trap the stack, I just go Dark Ritual Doomsday. So we're fine. So I just pay this one. Floating mana. Now they're going to try trapping the stack, and then we'll go Dark Ritual Doomsday at the end, and we will rebuild our pile and still win because they can't draw any more cards for this game. Yogg will, I think, is, is, is going to do it here. Yeah, we got there. Let's go! Let's go! Oh! I don't think that... I don't know if that pile was perfect, but that was such a good idea. What? That was like probably one of the more interesting games of Magic I think I've ever played. Wow. Crazy. Okay, round two, we're against Tunnelgon. Tunnelgon's last uh, appearance here is a jewel list that cut P.O. Interesting. So how do you pay for Force of Will? You've cut P.O. and replaced it with four Mind Break Trap. Wait, that's kind of genius, huh? One, two, three, four, 10, 15, 19. They actually have more blue cards than a normal list. And then they've lessened their requirement on blue by cutting cards that cost blue. Wait, I, I actually like this a lot. I hadn't seen this list. This list makes a lot more sense to me. Hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. So Jewel cutting PO, which PO was not even a great card in Jewel. All right, what do I have? I've got a Doomsday that we can't cast but I have top spin and force, so definitely keeping. Yeah, they have rings. <laughs> Amir, registering bazaar. What kind of world is this? Why not straight Doomsday? Because I'm trying I'm trying some things and I'm trying to make the deck more powerful and see if it works. Saga Gaming. Saga Gaming could be pretty good against my hand. Depends on what we can find. Mana Crypt notably is like pretty bad at casting both Doomsday and uh, Consult Oracle, but it's very good with Sensei's Top. Like we have the ability to top spin and still crack and spin again, which will really help us find exactly what we're looking for. All right, so we've got Doomsday, Emerald, Underground Sea. None of those are particularly enticing. Um, Underground Sea is probably the best one of the bunch. We might end up just cracking and spinning again at their end step. For now, we'll just throw the um, the underground sea on top. My opponent could easily play a uh, Saga Gaming game here. We don't really have cards to deal with constructs. We just have to win, uh, which is typically how I one of the ways you I recommend dealing with constructs. <sighs> Ancient Doom, pass. All right, construct gaming for sure. I think I'm interested in crack spin and try to find like Tinker or something. Feels like my best way forward in this game. Probe. 
Probe strand. I don't know. If I ever console for Dark Ritual, I'll just instantly lose the game, so. It's no point. Trying to figure out if I want to cast Probe here. Could just be better to take it. I don't know. I'm going to get hit for like, what, five? Probably doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, this gives us another spin off of our crypt. So if we just go probe and then. And then we spin and then we can crack and spin and just try to find something that's actually good. Tinker. Trinisphere Coveted Jewel. That's really bad for me, right? Because I can only force one thing. So if they like choose not to make a construct, they can have uh, eight mana. I guess that's one short unless they draw a land off the top. I feel like if I were them... I would have just jammed Trinisphere. It's kind of odd. So I don't need a... F I could have double force, I guess. I don't know. We're going to have to spin first here. See what we find. It's land plus what? Dark Ritual. So does that just win the game on the spot? feel like it does. So I draw into Dark Ritual. All right, uh, I draw into Dark Ritual with my top. I play my land, crack. Dark Ritual, yeah. Okay, that just wins the game on the spot. And this is why you don't go Saga Gaming, friends. All right. Draw into my Dark Ritual. Crack for an Underground Sea. Dark Ritual, Doomsday, Gush Pile, win the game. Deck is just completely broken. Uh, okay, so we just need uh, Gush. I don't know. Lotus, Oracle. Does anything matter? Um, so we, we ponder to zero mana, gush, and we just need to gush into Oracle Lotus, so none of these other cards matter. Ponder down to four, gush down to two. Okay, so nothing else matters. So as long as I have gush, Lotus, Oracle, then whatever. Done. All right, so as long as my top card is... Gush Lotus Oracle. Try not to make too many mistakes on stream here. Seeing as we already DT'd for Black Lotus. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is just a beautiful example of why I don't believe in Urza Saga as a primary game plan. Even if my opponent had Urza Saga here with blue card force, they are still lost. If my opponent instead had blue card force and played Trinisphere, they would be winning. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't know if... I love Doomsday, but I am looking to play a new deck in paper. So this is the big reason why we're we're gonna get, we're learning Doomsday so that I can try to win Eternal Weekend this year. I mean, they should have played Trinisphere anyways. I also agree with that statement. All right, so my opponent is on Peoless um, Jewel. The, all these are the five cards I'll consider. I definitely am going to cut Island. And I really hate Flusterstorm in this matchup. Though, if my opponent's on four Mind Break Traps, it does get a little bit better. <laughs> I don't know about that.
Yeah, they added four mind break traps instead of four POs, which I actually think makes the deck a lot better. Because you have four rings as payoff. You don't need to have four POs, four rings, four jewel, right? I don't I don't think that's necessary. So I actually kind of really like their innovation. I think their innovation is quite good. Uh I don't think I want to cut all of my fluster storms if they're playing mind break traps though, right? That's the only thing. I do actually not mind. I don't mind repeal because repeal can just like buy a turn with um saga token. Um, what card do I want to cut? Probably a black card or a top. I do trim the third top quite a lot. No, I think probe is fine. Could be preordain. Could be dark ritual. We'll just we'll trim a top. It's fine. I don't like. I mean, the top is like generically good. It is bad in multiples, but you always want to draw your first one if you have any mocks in. It might be dark ritual, but I do need to keep our level of um, uh, combo power. I think this is just a keep. I have double force against Jewel, as long as they don't go <laughs> all in on a Saga hand again. And then when I do draw a blue source, I have Ancestral. I might never draw a blue source and lose the game, but I think that's worth I think that's worth it. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep this hand. It's like less. Uh no, it's it's fifteen, right? Because we just cut an island, but we have twelve we have twelve lands and uh petal lotus and sapphire. It's not a good number, but I mean I think keeping double force against Jewel is very good, and then we have the like strong backup plan, so uh, I mean we we might never draw a blue source and lose this game. That's fine. That could totally happen. Yeah, that's not going to resolve. Solid hand. Okay. So it's time to find out if they're, are, are they really Cherry X-Man in disguise? Do they have three payoff spells in their hand? Uh, I guess Hercules is like a lot worse without them having P.O. in their deck. I deserve Black Lotus. All right, so time to find out if they have a third payoff spell. Probe. I have six value. Six mana jewel? No jewel, not cherry X-Man confirmed. All right, well, we are a blue source away from winning the game. What did you draw? Drew a ring. Man, they're good. Sheesh. All right, still have this. This is probably my last draw step to win the game. If I don't draw my blue source here, we probably just lose. Unlucky. Four draw steps. Yeah, I don't know. There's some amount of this probability baked in, but... I think it was fine. Oh, another miss? We get another draw step? It's nice. Maybe they just drew force blue card instead. 
I mean, we drew five cards and there were no blue sources. If we drew a blue source in any of our five cards, we win. So I think I like the cube. They're passing. I mean, that means they have force, though. So that means we're probably just straight up dead. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those games. They didn't draw two. They didn't draw there. That's crazy. There's no world in which that is correct. They're going to try to win with Saga tokens instead. This doesn't make any sense. Just activate your ring and draw 10 cards and win the game. My opponent is toying with me. I hate this play. Blue source. All right. So I'm going to lead with Time Walk. That'll give us a land drop. Might lose 5-3 life off of it, but that's okay. They know I have Tinker Ancestral, so they could just force here if they want. Okay, they chose not to force... The nice part about this is if they end up like we can actually Hercules on their turn and uh if we like hit a land drop we can like Hercules on their turn after. Probe. So I don't think I want to probe. And the reason I don't want to probe is I don't want to turn on mind break trap. So I want to just cast Tinker, they cast force, I cast force and then they have to find another force. Now they're activating the ring. That's crazy. Why we, we they could have like seven million cards in hand. They pitch mind break trap, by the way. They also don't have double blue, or they could hard cast mind break trap very easily as well. All right, does this win? We have a Citadel, and we have an open land slot, and we have Probe, so I think so. So I think we'll just play Necro as a top here. Yep, there's the Mind Break Trap. That's still fine. We'll just play out the Oracle. Play out the Dark Ritual. Play, hmm. Play out the Repeal. It's kind of unfortunate they don't have a Saga token yet. I'll still let the Dark Ritual resolve first, I guess. So I don't get my whole stack trapped. Uh, does it make any more sense to just bounce this? Probably. Okay. Okay. Ritual. So I'll just leave the demonic on top with this. Oh, wow. I can put the brainstorm on top. Where does the other card go on the bottom? I guess. I don't have a mana yet for whatever I demonic for. It's kind of annoying. Mm. This I'm already resolving the trigger, so I can't get consult and win. That is not a legal option here. I guess if I get a doomsday, I can technically cast it. I'll just probe them first.
Okay, they have nothing. So now I just cast Doomsday and I go triple Mox Oracle. Freaking easy game, right? I think I I hate the way my opponent played this game. Uh, all right. So Lotus, Sapphire, Ruby, Jet, Oracle. I go from eight to four to two. I guess I have Devotion 4, so I could do anything I want. Yeah, I, I don't think we're supposed to win this game. I think our opponent should have drawn their cards with the one ring every turn and then just tried to combo kill me. There's really no reason to play like a, a Saga. Like You just don't ever go for Saga game plan. Trust me, it's always bad. <laughs> just play your, your broken combo deck uh, and, and do your thing. We did miss until turn, what, our sixth draw was a blue card. So theoretically, if we had drawn a blue card at any other point in this game, I think we were extremely favored to win, too. So there's a little bit of that, but um, kind of wild. Okay, here we go, round three. We're, we spent the whole time uh, in between rounds talking about Jewel, and now we get to play against the Jewel player. Uh, my hand does not have... An ancestral, oh, sorry, a force of will in it. Does that mean it's not keepable? I kind of think the answer to that question is yes. It doesn't have a turn one kill or a turn two kill or even a perspective turn two kill, and it doesn't have a force against known jewel aficionado. I'm just going to put this hand back and try for something better. So this hand also doesn't have anything besides like tinker turn two i could theoretically keep this hand go for tinker and then yog will rebuy tinker turn three kill is just not appropriate on the draw against jewel i think this has like a, a double tinker turn two though no, because I have to put a card back, right? So even if I was to get a Tinker, Tinker off these Moxen, yeah. On the play on seven, I might keep this hand. Man, these hands have just not been it. I don't think this hand's worth it either. All right, so if I keep these four cards, I can put back Necro, Consult, Scroll. Sure. I don't think we're winning this game for what it's worth. <laughs> my opponent kept seven cards on the play. Like, I could technically have kept my opening seven, but I just don't think it's a very wise keep, and you have the London Mulligan, and then our six was just bad, and our five was unplayable, so that just happens. All right, so four restricted mana, no lands, and a one ring. They can probably come back and do another one ring next turn. Let's see. They have Pio with no blue source, but we have no mana, so... Actually, their hand was pretty bad, all things considered. That's one of the worst hands I've seen them keep. I mean, they're definitely always keeping it, but quite poor. If we had a seven-card hand, I feel like we would very easily win this game. But you see, like we definitely needed to have a force will on turn one or we would have lost. Come on, bro. Right. So, I mean, we made the correct decisions. We just didn't. Uh, get paid off in the end. All right. I mean, their hand wasn't even amazing, but their hand definitely required a Force of Will, so not much we could have really done. Uh, I guess their hand technically didn't require a first of will, Force of Will if we had a very powerful turn uh, uh, opportunity to turn one kill, right? 
Um, but not much we could have really done there. We, I think we made the correct choices with the uh, cards we had. So, um, I brought in this last time. I don't think I'm gonna bring in as many Hercules because we're on the play. I think I'm just gonna go Fluster Island misstep. Uh, I actually think Fluster is worse against my opponent's deck than against uh, the last round because we wanted Fluster to beat Mindbreak Trap, but we don't really need Fluster to beat PO. That's not really what we're here for. Like, as you can see, my opponent's deck can't really cast PO anyways. So maybe I... Yeah, I, I'd like the option of having a Hercules. So let's just go Island misstep Flusters and submit. It's really unfortunate because I think with like even remotely viable seven or six card hands, we would have very easily won that game. Like all we truly, all we truly needed to win to do to win that game is have a hand with turn one forcible into a good action, but we just never had any hands that were doing that. This hand is reasonable. Uh, just looking to find either Moxin or Ritual. So we can fetch a non-basic, not that we have a basic left on our deck anyways, uh, and we're just going to preordain looking for Moxon or lands or both, pedal scroll. I will take, ugh. pedal lets us draw any Moxon to tinker, so it's probably correct to just keep pedal. And then we'll force pitching gush, and we're just looking for a tinker win in this game. I guess technically a fetch land lets us Doomsday and Gush. So I guess we have options on how we want to use our force here. Do we want to pitch Gush? I could technically pitch Tinker. Technically just pitch Ponder. Lots of reasonable choices, it looks like. This is a Forge. I almost want to let Forge resolve. Forge might not, I might not actually have to force Forge here. Because I'm looking to win on the next turn. Though, I guess if I draw something that's not a mana source, is it possible to win on the next turn? I'm just going to let this Forge go. I think Forge is probably the weakest of the cards. I mean, they immediately hit Moxon off of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know if those came from their hand or not, but those are basically best possibles. That one came from their hand. If they like end up hitting four mana and have to have to counter something, I'll be very upset. All right, so we're just looking for a Moxon or a Fetch. Fetch. So Fetch means we have Doomsday with Gush into Force Backup. So that'll work. So they can have Force Mind Break Trap is the way they win here. We do need to do an extra draw, right? So we can gush into gush is our second spell. So if they have like multiple mind break traps, we can gush into force. We can go. Mm, I mean, we definitely need, like, if we go Gush into Probe, Lotus, Oracle, we have just one Force backup, right? So I, th I guess we can technically go Gush into Lotus Ancestral. It doesn't really help us, though. They could play, I guess, if they have Misstep, they have Misstep either way. 
So I think we just do gush into probe lotus oracle. And then if they pass the turn back, we would need we would we would not be able to win if we did that. So maybe the answer is actually just probe into oh, sorry, gush into ancestral gush into ancestral lotus. That'll put us to zero. Both of them play into mind break, uh, into mental misstep anyways. So I can just gush into ancestral lotus oracle force days. No, days doesn't do anything. I don't think there's a way to like make this more redundant because we only have three mana to work with anyways. So it's just Gush Ancestral into Lotus Oracle. All right, whatever. I'm over it. Couldn't figure out a way to have multiple pieces of interaction, so. They had nothing, obviously. I'll have to go back and look and see if there's a way I can build that where I get two pieces of interaction. But I couldn't figure out a way to get a second piece of interaction. So. Um... Okay, yeah, I mean, that's exactly how most of those games should go. On the draw, would we like to take out Days and play something else instead? I actually don't even think so. I'm just going to keep this. Basically did exactly what we wanted to do. Had a counter spell, and then had count... Oh, this is just multiple counter spells. Definitely keep this. Opponent has Mulligan to five. This should really be one of our better matchups, so. This is a nice hand, for sure. Yeah, I'll have to go back and look and see if there's a way I can get a second piece of interaction in that. Saga Gaming? This hand is risky? In what way? I don't really see this hand as risky in any way. I think I'm going to trap that. No doomsday, no tutors. It's fine. We have a ponder. Any tutor wins the game on the spot. Yeah, look, game over. <laughs> I probably should play the Pearl out. Sure. All right, this game's over. Don't don't do this to me, Citadel. All right, there we go. There we go. Game's over. All right. I have force for any one card, so I can just do Moxin into Oracle.
I love this deck. I think Tinker is so good. Uh, I do this, and I just go... Uh, yep. Done. This is the best Citadel deck I've ever made. By far. I, I, I wasn't wasn't Eric complaining about how the Citadel was like bricks. Like this is like one of the single best Citadel decks I've ever made. You like very it's you have three tops. You, you have Doomsday's instantly winning. Like it's just an unbelievable deck at, at converting Citadel. It's very very good at Citadeling. And uh, I don't know. I think uh, I think adding Tinker to this deck, I, I I don't know. I haven't played a ton with the, the the normal version of Doomsday, but this this version of Doomsday vibes extremely well with me, and I believe Tinker has won me many games where Doomsday wouldn't, so I've been very, very happy. In this particular game, we, there was Doomsday Jet, right? So we still would have been able to Doomsday on this turn and probably still win, but like Tinker is just so clean. Okay, here we go. Round four of our six round vintage challenge. We're up against the Jeskai Master, uh, Unlucky Monkey. We have, we were just going over how the, all of the matchups in the three O bracket looked very very bad for us. Uh, so we're gonna have to power through and battle in. All right, what do I have? This looks quite good. Peep. This is turn to Tinker with Flusterstorm back up. I'm going to play these now in case I get Lavinia on turn one. This is like a perfect example of a hand that I enjoy a lot more than... Like if these were both cantrips, like maybe there's a Doomsday line that works out pretty well. But like this is a very straightforward Tinker with Flusterstorm back up line, so... Oh no, am I getting turn one Lavinia anyways? That's so crazy. I think I'm just getting turn one Lavinia. That's just so nuts. <sighs> so good. My opponent has to have Black Lotus or Pearl or Sapphire to do this line. And they just always have it. So now I have to just get Ancestral. It'd be so, this game would be so easy if I just had Tinker with Flusterstorm back up. Now I just have to get Ancestral and like maybe go for an Oracle kill or something. I don't know. All right. Very, very unluck unlucky for us. Truly, they are not unlucky. So this plays into negation, but I have a fluster, so I'd rather not. I guess they don't play one mana. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Why can't I go Tinker? Read this card. And tell me, one, how I can cast Tinker, and two, what my Bolus Citadel would do after I resolved my Bolus Citadel, if I was able to do that. It's more value for me to use this Mental Misstep than my Flusterstorm right now, so I would rather just use the Flusterstorm. All right, they have Force and Misstep and Lavinia. They just didn't misstep my Mystical because they knew there was a Lavinia. Yeah, I mean, what, what am I really going to do here? My opponent has the perfect hand. There's just, it's just very hard to beat this hand, huh? Turn one Lavinia with force misstep back up. Why not pay life for, me for mental misstep? All right, so read the card and then tell me why I didn't pay life for my mental misstep. <laughs> this is <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, that's just the the actual top one percent draw. It's the absolute po- absolute possible best draw. Okay, um, so what are we gonna do? That was the single best possible uh, draw from them. They also had Merchant Scroll in their hand for uh, Ancestral too. She was just like. It's okay. We we you sometimes you get vintage and sometimes you get vintage in different ways. And my opponent certainly was the one doing the vintaging that game. No, no, no real reason to dwell over it because it's just out of our control. We had a very good hand and a very good game plan, and it just wasn't good against what they had. Hmm. So, Jeskai matchup. What do I really want? Mindbreak Trap, maybe. Cut down, but probably not snuff out, considering it doesn't kill um, Lavinia. So, probably just, like, Fatal Push, Mindbreak Trap in, and, like, Mystical vampiric out maybe mystical dark ritual snuff out is bad against lavinia true i kind of like the idea of like slow tutors out or like dark ritual out or mana crypt out something like that let's go with just slow tutors out it does make our tinker worse though Though like Tinker against my opponent's deck can be challenging. I'm just gonna leave I'm gonna leave Vampiric and I'm gonna take out uh I'm gonna take out Mana Crypt. Mystical Mana Crypt. Let's do this. Yeah, I was an idiot for not killing my opponent on turn one. <laughs> oh my lord. Alright. Uh I don't know, man. If I cast this hand, it's going to be quite challenging, right? Because I am going to get... I can get Wastelanded, and I can get... There are just so many ways I can go... This goes wrong. Like, Wasteland... Oh, Monkey... Man, building this pile is going to be quite difficult. I have no idea. Like, I have to think about how I would build this pile. It would be like probe on top. It'd be like pro man. I don't know. You build this pile. I, this is a pile you would want Street Wraith in. But if I go like probe on top and then. If I get Wastelanded, Ancestral doesn't work. I don't actually think I can build a convincing pile here. Like, I can play Probe on top is obviously probe on top but after that like where am i really going am i just gonna go and if i go probe on top and i draw into ancestral with three cards in my library and i can't cast it then ancestral's dead and then that doesn't work so like i can go probe Ancestral, Lotus, Oracle, Island or something. But, like, is that really going to win over the long-term game here? Like, I have to want... I want to have a way to beat Wasteland, and I need a way to theoretically beat Lavinia, maybe. I don't know if I can do that. It doesn't really feel possible. But if I go Ritual, Lotus, Probe... But I have to put Ancestral or I can't break into my pile fast enough. I could go Probe, Fetch Land, Double Oracle. No. Because then I still need... 
pro fetch land c double oracle i would still need that still wouldn't be wasteland Double basic? I don't have double basic. I'm just going to build Ancestral Lotus Oracle Pile. And if I if things happen, they happen. So I'm going to build uh, a probe on top for monkey, ancestral, lotus, oracle. Maybe I put a second land in the pile at the bottom. Well, there's just like no world in which I'm ever getting a force off. If I, I guess if I theoretically, if they theoretically have a mind break trap and I go probe ancestral, then maybe. Probe on top is, 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 is always happening. We're always doing probe on top. Last card, Flusterstorm. Flusterstorm, Oracle, Lotus, Ancestral Probe. They pitched a Merchant Scroll. Not really. None of our piles are super good against waste. If they do waste us, we can probe them and then hold open force pitching negation and then go two draw steps and go Lotus Oracle. That's what I'm planning on doing. So my opponent is looking at my pile now to figure out what we have. Like, if they wasteland me here, I will hold my probe. Or, sorry, I'll, I will probe them, but then, like, I can't ever cast my Ancestral, so it just goes to Force of Will, which is fine. And then our next two draws are Lotus Oracle, so it takes us two turns, but we'll eventually get to cast it with Force Backup, so... I don't think this is, like, a particularly... I don't really like the position that my keep puts me in, but I think it's like compelling enough that I should go for it. Um, like I'm not under any delusion that we have a, you know, an extremely high chance of winning based on what we just did, but I think it's a high enough that and in a matchup that I I perceive as to to be bad, 
I think it makes sense. Like, I, I think this matchup is bad, and I think this this play is good enough that I want to, I just want to go for it. I mean, you saw how game one went. <laughs> Though I, I, I do truly believe that the game one was basically a perfect hand from them, so... I mean, Cavern also doesn't beat Wasteland, right? All right, so they do have Wasteland. I'm kind of surprised they forced Doomsday if they had Wasteland, to be honest. Maybe they drew it off the top. So this is definitely not good for us. I am going to probe and see what they have, and then I can force pitching Ancestral if I need to. They have Monkey Wasteland. Wow. So we have to force the monkey. You just don't need cavern ever. Like cavern is almost never going to help you resolve it. Like you could just do that with your normal spells. All right. So I just have to hope they don't hit uh force. I have to play this now in case of Lavinia. They drew negation for turn. They're so good at this game. All right. You got me. Oh, they didn't even have to cast a single cantrip. They just drew it. That's crazy. All right. I mean, I can't even be mad at this win. Like, we just had no chance, right? Like, we were in an okay spot where we have to force Monkey, because if we don't force Monkey, then they steal the Oracle and we'd lose. Um, and I have to play the Lotus, because if I, if, I, if I have to play the Lotus to play around them drawing a Negation on their next turn, or a uh, Lavinia. I, if, I, if I don't force Ragavan, the Ragavan attacks and steals my Oracle. We don't win on our turn. Because we have a Lotus and no Oracle. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? I think we played that pretty well. I just It just didn't work out. My opponent had uh, at least one piece of interaction in their main, in their hand, and then drew the two more pieces. So... Oh, casting Ancestral? I will draw out of my deck. <laughs> I, I i can't cast ancestral recall because i will not have enough cards in my deck and i will die which is like the problem of putting ancestral in that pile but i don't think we could have done anything else because i didn't have like street wraiths or anything right so like if i had a street wraith and I put it in the Ancestral spot. Does that help us in any way? It does win this game, right? I don't know. No, it doesn't actually win this game because they still just negate Lotus. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. That that opponent has a good matchup and they uh, drew the cards that are good in the matchup, so. Okay, we're entering round five. Of six in this uh, vintage challenge, this would be a good time to get a win uh, up against Prince, who is uh, a jewel player. Uh, though you know they have quite a big range, but mostly they play jewel. Let's see what we have. We have Oracle Consult, Top Spin. Though our Pearl does not help us cast Oracle Consult. That's an interesting hand. If I didn't think my opponent would be on jewel. I would be pretty down to keep this hand. But if I'm on Jewel, if they're on Jewel and I need to find a Force of Will, I guess I could just consult for a Force if I really wanted to. And I could always repeal Cantripping. The problem is really that this Pearl doesn't cast Oracle Consult. Oracle Consult costs exactly blue, blue, black, which is quite difficult for my off-color Moxon to make. I would have to find Lotus. 
I think I'm going to keep this hand, though. I think there's obviously some inherent risk into keeping this hand against Jewel. But I mean, I have top and a land and a path forward. So, and I have a stopgap of a force of will. And I can still win even if my Oracle gets exiled. So, I think this is fine. We'll see what happens. Saga Gamer. Okay. Crypt Gaming. Okay. Sapphire. It's a good hand. Pedal. Man. Pass. Holding up Hardcast Force, it looks like. So I could repeal the mana, uh, the Sapphire, and that would make it so they can't cast Force this turn. Kind of feels like something I want to do next turn, though. I feel like it's crack, spin, find a land, pass the turn. If they like go for Saga, hold up Force, I can just repeal their Sapphire end of turn. I also can save repeal for a construct token. Oh, what is happening? Jesus. <laughs> Having two of their five uh, or seven blue sources is less than ideal for this. All right. You got it. All right. I mean, Black Lotus is our best draw, but I'll take a force and lands. Jet Necro Ponder. These suck. Maybe I just draw Ponder and then and then. Shuffle. God, we're so screwed in this game. Like, Jet's not terrible. <laughs> we're not consulting for Lotus. <laughs> Fuck off with that. This is why we don't you don't stream Doomsday. <laughs> mm. I think I take the jet. And then spin. Found a doomsday. But these cards are so bad. All of these cards are just horrible. I think I'm going to draw with my top and then ponder shuffle. Which is a, a, certainly a desperation avenue here. But I still have consult force if I need to. What is happening? They have main deck hole breacher? I lost almost nothing of value. I wonder if I pitch Oracle now, considering I don't have console anymore. This console gets exiled? No, console's in my graveyard. I'm just going to pitch Oracle. They're going to have Force Blue card ready.
<laughs> oh, maybe they're just on Esper Saga then. Because they pitched Flusterstorm. So they're probably just on Esper Saga. I kind of need this repeal to... I mean, we're just super dead in every way, right? I guess I can just repeal my jet. I mean, they have... This hand is so good. Four Sense Astral, Hole Breacher, Mana to cast everything. Uh, so, like, theoretically, I can still, like, tinker out of this game. I'm ready for my stack to get trapped. Man, probe is a bad draw. I guess I could have spun instead. I think using my repeal is better. Yeah, I think that seals this game. I don't think we have any real, because we... Yeah, I mean, that's such a good hand from them. It's very hard for us to ever beat that. I'd like to go to their turn and see a fetch land so I can determine for sure that they're on, like, Grixis or Esper or something. The problem... The problem now is... Even... Okay, so maybe they're on initiative, actually, then. Maybe they're actually on initiative. And they just were very lucky to not draw any of the initiative creatures. <laughs> because I don't think there's any deck in the format that plays Snapcaster other than Esper Initiative right now. So if I spin and see a Tinker, then I can take a billion and maybe still come out with a win. Okay. Uh, I'll just play another turn and see if I can see any more cards from their deck. It was a really strong hand from them. Sapphire... Mana Crypt, Petal, Ancestral Force, Hole Reacher. Yeah, that's rough. All right, let's just F6 and see if I can see any more cards. But Snapcaster, Hole Breacher certainly makes me feel like they're probably on the for initiative creature version. It actually does there's their Snapcaster in the X File deck. They could be copying the X File deck. So it might be the X File deck. Um, which would have four Bowmaster. That would be really bad. That matchup looks extremely, extremely bad. Yeah. Does that have a pedal? Yeah, so they might be copying this list that we were just looking at, which would be really rough for us because it's uh, six Bowmasters and uh, six Bowmaster effects, eight forces, three more Mind Rake traps in the board, Thoughtseize. That would be really, really a bad deck for them, for us to, for them to have copied into. How do we play against this deck? Looks very challenging. Looks like Fatal Push, Opposition Agent, Negation, Trap. Maybe not Negation. Maybe just Trap. And then Island, Mystical...
mana crypt. Something like that. Though boarding out mana crypt and boarding in opposition agent, not exactly ideal. Okay. I think that's what's happening here, but we'll have to see. Yeah, this is pretty close. We're going to go um, jet. Sorry, we're going to play land, jet, top, then ruby. It's not a bad hand by any means. We, If we draw a land off the top, we actually have a winning gush pile. Like, we have a winning gush pile with force backup, I guess. It's not too bad. So it's a bit all in. I'm not sure if we 100% want to go down that line. I'm doing it this way. That way, the only card that's actually exposed to trap is Ruby. God, they haven't. Yeah, I think that's fine. Man, that's so bad for me. Having the misstep there is so bad for me. Jeez. It's just really rough. You can definitely build decks like this that are extremely good against Jewel and Doomsday and then bad against some of the other parts of the format. Is this going to be Tinker? Narsa. I'm going to hard cast days because I want to be able to play land doomsday. Not that I want to be able to play land doomsday. <laughs> vamp. Okay. Well, I think this will just be vamp tinker and pray. We'll have to see what opponent does. I think vamp tinker and pray... Sure. No, I don't think like vamping and casting Doomsday is, is very good. Because I can't break my Doomsday pile this turn anyways. What's the fucking point, man? <laughs> They're just going to Demonic for Lavinia. Okay. I have to let them do this first. Hmm... Really, really brutal. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, like all, our last two rounds, we have been thoroughly vintaged. Our hands were not up to snuff. I mean, they know my hand, so this doesn't matter. So they have one card in hand. They have an active Saga. I have to probably Vampiric for Fatal Push instead of Tinker. I guess I could theoretically Vamp for Opposition Agent, but that just loses on board. So it's like, is it better for me to Ancestral, or is it better for me to push? If I push, I still have lands that get me to Doomsday, even if I'm going to be extremely pressured on life total, maybe. Well, 
I have to draw two lands to Doomsday through a Lavinia, which is not really great. If I, I don't know, my opponent makes a 3-3, three, three, I Doomsday, I go to 10, it becomes a 5-5, five, five, I go to 5, yeah, I should be able to beat a Saga token if I draw exactly land. Like, if I draw land in Doomsday, I think I do race that. So, I'm going to go push. And there's no reason not to just cast this now before they can have, I don't know, hard cast negation or something. Obviously, they can have follow-up Lavinia as well. But So, they're not on the X-File list because the X-File list doesn't have any Lavinias. That's a good draw. Looks quite bad for us. What was that? I did not want that. Whatever that was. When did that open up? Weird. Could just be plain old Esper Saga. Could be Initiative Tinker still. <laughs> All right. Can I get a? Can I get one of them? One of them Tinkers. Misty Rainforest. All right. Well, can I build a pile here that beats Hole Breacher? No. No. <sighs> I don't have Street Wraith, so that's kind of a problem. So I have Time Walk. That gets me down to three cards. Oh yeah, Street Wraith doesn't beat you anyways. True, true. So the problem is I'm at five cards. I draw Time Walk for turn. I'm at four cards. I cast Time Walk. I'm at three cards. What if we just draw Repeal? What if we put Repeal on the top of our library, Repeal into Gush, and go for the win? Oh, what about Demonic? Demonic is an idea as well. Do I have enough mana? Oh, I do have, I have enough mana because I have Jet. We could go Demonic Time Walk. Uh, but then I have demonic time, but then I have another card, right? There's another card I could possibly, no, that it, I could, it's a two out of three, right? If I go demonic time walk, it's a two out of three. Oh, I could just walk on top and then demonic for Oracle. Five cards, draw walk for turn, draw demonic for turn, demonic for oracle, oracle. Yeah, I think that's the best line. I think that's the best line. So let's do time walk, demonic, oracle. Uh, I mean, my last two for fallback. Uh, I mean, there's no fallback, right? We just do. We just doomed. I guess it could be like Oracle Repeal. No, re Repeal is kind of bad. It's probably just creatures then. If they counter Time Walk or Demonic, if they counter Time Walk with Flusterstorm, we pay. If they counter Demonic with Flusterstorm, we have to take another hit. But there's nothing we can do about that. I'm just going to put... Oracle Opposition Agent, I think. I don't think anything matters. I guess I could put... So... I could bounce a Construct 
I could put like repeal Oracle. No, then I won't have enough blue mana. <laughs> you want to play, t you want to go Tinker Citadel with Mox Land Oracle? That's cute. Uh, I think that line loses to Fluster, right? Yeah. This line doesn't lose to Fluster, but it's not amazing against Fluster either. I don't know. I'm overthinking about it. Let's just do Oracle Opposition Agent. Time Walk. Uh, so, Oracle on the bottom, Opposition Agent, Oracle, Demonic, Time Walk on top. Let's do that. Or maybe I just want Oracle above. So, Opposition Agent, Oracle, Oracle, Demonic, Time Walk. Yeah, sure. Why not? That seems reasonable. What do we lose to? Like a variety of things. That. <laughs> they actually just take Volt Key here? No, they don't have enough for Volt Key, right? They're short on Volt Key. So they're just gonna go top and tinker. Oh my God, come on, man. Like, why do we play the game? Why do we even bother? <laughs> it's so fucked, man. <laughs> they can't miss. They have a top. Man, we've like we've been <laughs> we've just been murdered. Uh, this is what I'm telling you, people. You can just play Esper Saga. You don't have to put initiative creatures in your deck. It doesn't help. I like our pile. Our pile was fun. I like the fact that we can technically beat a Hold Breacher. That's kind of interesting. It's cute. No, we can't beat anything. <laughs> <laughs> We're dead. No one needs sleight of hand or portent or any of that garbage. Get it out of my deck. You won't catch me registering those cards. If I end up playing real Doomsday at Eternal Weekend, I'm just going to play more dazes and petals and stuff. I ain't, I'm not playing portents or sleight of hands. All right, my opponent seems to have found the force of will that they are looking for. So I believe we are ready to lose. Maybe they'll accidentally fluster us. Damn, unlucky. They didn't accidentally fluster us. Ah, uh, man. I felt like we... Uh, it's kind of sad that they just, like, had deterministic brutality. I mean, our, our pile beat Mindbreak Trap, right? Yeah, our pile beat Mindbreak Trap. It just didn't beat Tinker Draw the Deck. <laughs> All right, rest in peace, hopes and dreams. All right, we're here for the sixth and final round. We've got... Okay, breakers near the top of the three twos. They were playing against the, the higher breaker three two. So a win here, and maybe we are in the bubble. Probably not gonna top eight if we win, but we should try and see if we can do another 10th. <laughs> Let's do our best and uh, hopefully we'll do some winning. This hand is great. I've got Tinker, Fluster, Days, Demonic. I have I have turned to Tinker with Flust with Force Days back up, so. We can just go Demonic, Lotus, Tinker. Okay, Dredge. Okay, Dredge. If they grief us, we'll force it. 
and we'll hold our days so that we can go for our line on on turn two. Oh, fuck off, man! <laughs> I, I meant I meant turn one. Sorry, our turn one or our turn one. My opponent had black card grief, black card grief, and so now we lose our tinker. They don't have any dredgers right now, and they discarded a bizarre Baghdad. So I kind of should have expected they had something like that. Uh. Right. Well, that is very, very unfortunate for our, like, basically one of our best opening hands. We just were not beating double grief. So now what is our plan? It must be ancestral, right? We obviously have Yogg and Doomsday and Oracle combo. It's just hopefully Ancestral draws us good cards next turn here. This is a play draw difference here. We were very easy. Oh, they have triple bizarre. So their opening hand was double interaction, triple bizarre. Man. What? <laughs> All right. They didn't hit a dredger on the first one. And they hit a dredger on that one. Man, this was just a play draw diff. Maybe I'm supposed to Ancestral first in case I draw Mystical or Vamp. Hello? Yeah. All right. Does Yogg will get us there? Because I don't think uh, Doomsday gets us there anymore. Yeah, so it has to be a win on this turn. So... All right. We're one mana short of this. If we had drawn a Dark Ritual instead of one of these lands... <laughs> I just have been so unlucky, huh? That's quite sad. I'm actually dead on board even without Icarids. <sighs> it had to be double grief. It couldn't have even been forced because I had days. All right. I, my my uh my my tolerance and 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 uh, mental is taking a rough beating in this this final set of matches here. Okay, these six come in. Um, island misstep, repeal necro. It was going so well, and then it stopped going so well. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. We got sideboard matches versus dredge.
Wait, this deck wants me to keep an island? That's kind of weird. Nah, I ain't keeping an island. There's no world where we ever Citadel, right? Like, we just always get Sphinx. It pretty much always wins. Well, having the option is kind of nice, too, though. I'm just going to keep them both. I already have Necro coming out. I need to cut one more card here. Mm, no. What if our main goal is Tinker? Oh, your Yogg looks pretty bad when we don't play any of the Tormod scripts or anything. Seems fine. All right. They're on... Will... And Negation... So I can theoretically go Dark Ritual, Triple Black, Pearl, Demonic, Two Black. No. I can go Demonic. No. I can go... Can I Tinker? If I go Triple Black... Pearl, Demonic to two black, get Tinker, but I don't have a blue. If I go Preordain, if I go Dark Ritual Doomsday, then what? Dark Ritual Doomsday gives me... They probably brought in Wasteland... I don't have to Dark Ritual Doomsday. I could just go Dark... I could just go Underground Sea Preordain. Is that good enough versus Dredge? I don't think I want to make a Dark Ritual Doomsday turn one pile here. It just doesn't seem good. I guess I theoretically could just put a, a Lotus on, my to on top of my library with... Preordain and Brainstorm. So I could go Dark Ritual, Doomsday, put a Lotus on top, and then I have access to Demonic Lotus. I mean, that's got to be good enough. If, if I go Dark Ritual, Doomsday, and it gets countered, then I have follow-up Demonic. I mean, this, this has to be a keep. They kept another seven. Well, I'm probably not building a demonic. Oh, you mean just as a as a, a plan B? Yeah. All right. They had negation pitching. Will. I'm just gonna play this pearl now. If they want to trap that. It's better than me getting my other spell trapped. I just like keep hitting bizarre seven card hands. This one has double dredger Icarid plus grief. <laughs> what am I supposed to do versus this power? <sighs> I 
What's my out? If I had known I was going to hit this, I guess I can theoretically wait another turn and brainstorm next turn. Ugh. Uh, just an Icarid so far is not the worst. All right, they hit a second Icarid and an Amalgam. That should give me two turns. So I can wait on this Brainstorm, get an extra card. This game is still winnable. Draw for turn. Oh. So the most damage I can take next turn is six. I can take 18 if they hit every single chill. All right, I'm going to cast Brainstorm. Oh. I hope their last card isn't Mind Break Trap. I mean, we're just going for it, right? I think they had two cards when they dredged, so I think their last card can be Mind Break Drop. Oh, okay, game three. That's crazy. My deck is pretty broken too, huh? Okay, okay, we got a game three. They can mulligan, I can have Ley Lines. All right, I think in this game, I mean, none of my other cards are good, right? I was going to say, like, take out Citadel, but, like, none of my cards are already any good. All right, let's just hit submit, I think. All right, opponent can mulligan in their dredge hand. Like, they're a dredge deck, right? They mulligan, right? 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 And we can have a ley line hand, right? Right? Bro, why are you doing this to me? I can't keep it. It has to do something else. It can't just be ley line. They mulligan to six. We mulligan to six. Oh, okay. Hello. They kept their six. So I just bought him a ley line because lay having two ley lines doesn't do anything. I guess the force also doesn't really do anything. So I could theoretically put only one ley line into play. And then if they like vigor my ley line in my upkeep, I can go dark ritual mock second ley line that might be better than force but if i just draw a blue card that i can protect my it's probably just better to keep force i'm gonna bottom lit second ley line and put first ley line in this is not a this is definitely still going to be tough. Our hand isn't particularly strong after this. They can have triple hollow one. Though I guess we do have uh, the ability to go demonic for tab. Though they can have counters and griefs. If they grief my demonic, we literally have nothing. But what am I going to do? Got to keep this. It is what it is. They pitched a Force of Will. Here's a Grief taking my Demonic. They have two cards left in hand. 
Yep. And then they have a hollow one. Chalice. Okay. All right. I didn't keep the repeal in for Chalice. I didn't think it was worth it. So you just have to play without having zero drops, which is fine. It's going to make our tinkers pretty impossible, but... Oracle. So now we have blue card force. Something. They have three cards in hand now. Activating. Up to five, down to two. Looking for vigor, I assume, or hollow ones. I would force either. Yeah, I'm just going to force hollow one. I don't want to put myself on that clock, especially when I can draw Doomsday. They know my whole hand, right? Okay, up to two. Of course. This is an instance where it would be a lot better to be normal Doomsday. All right, up to five, down to two. What are you going to have after... Six. Got a Vigor in my upkeep? No. Flusterstorm. Okay. That's good against Vigor. Bad against Hollow One. Oh, okay. Up to five. Down to two. Hopefully they find green card Vigor. I really want them to have green card Vigor at this point. They pitched Vigor. Fuck. They found a Hollow One. It's so much worse for me. Okay. Doomsday. All right. I mean, is there any compelling reason to Dark Ritual? No, because my opponent has one card in hand. So this should just be winning because the most they can do is four damage. All right. I think we're just winning here. What if I get Wastelanded? It's still fine. Well, if I get Wastelanded, I might need to build a pile that... All right, let me just think for a second here. If they have green, Phyrexian Spell, or Surgical. I guess that's fair. Yeah. I should maybe have Dark Ritual then. Fuck. Didn't think about that. All right. So I'm just going to make an ancestral pile that includes a land because then I can just fluster storm. But I had fluster storm if they had mental misstep, right? So I definitely, I definitely should have, I definitely should have ritual. It was wrong. So I think I just do Ancestral Pile. Because I have Flusterstorm. And I just include Oracle, Underground Sea. I don't think Gush is better. Yeah, I guess Gush is just better. If I Gush and then... I just replay the land. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Gosh. Gosh. I only have one Oracle. It doesn't really matter. I don't think the other cards are mattering, right? Well, if my opponent... Uh, if my opponent plays... A Noxious on their turn... So I think the answer is just gush and then how I think I put ancestral in my pile as well in case my opponent's surgicals. Let me figure out. So it's definitely these two. And then does anything else matter? I guess we can just put time walk, ancestral. Is there like any world where putting a tabernacle makes sense? 
There's no... Is there any world where I get Wasteland surgical and then is hard for me to go off? I'm trying to figure out if I need to put a C in my pile at all. I don't think so. I can technically put force in my pile. Doesn't really do anything. I think I'm just gonna put all draw spells in case I get surgical. But if I get wastelanded, I can still fluster. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I don't know if that's right. I don't care anymore. Done. Uh, all right. So as long as Oracle and Gush. So I don't know. Preordain. Time walk. Ancestral. Oracle, gosh, six. Yeah, we got vintage a couple of times. I don't They. <laughs> we still win through this, right? I, I got punished by, for exactly the thing I thought I would get punished for, right? This still wins because I go to five and then I go to one and I still win. So it's fine. But that is exactly the play that we thought about why I would dark ritual and I, I fucked up and I didn't dark ritual. That's kind of wild. Let's not cast another doomsday. No. All right, they're dead. Wow, crazy match. Oh, GG's, GG's opponent. Wow. No, Noxious doesn't shuffle, it just time walks me by putting a Doomsday on top. Alright, I should have stopped and thought about Dark Ritual more. No, but, my, but Noxious doesn't shuffle, it just puts on top. I guess if I know that my my life total is nine, then I don't actually even care about that card, right? So it doesn't even matter if I dark ritual. Because they, they that's the only card they can have. I mean the surgical is the one that I care more about, right? So I should I should just always dark ritual there. Because the, surg the surgical gives them... Uh, surgical on their turn gives them a... Chance to win? No, it does the same thing, right? Like, I'm still going to always win with the pile I made. Through surgical. True or false. My worst possible draws... No, I, I still... the With the pile I made, I still beat surgical every single time, right? Because I have two hits. So even if I was unlucky and drew Oracle the first turn, all of my next hits still win the game. Ancestral wins the game, Gush wins the game, Preordain wins the game, and Time Walk still wins the game. So, oh wait, no, if I draw exactly Oracle, Time Walk, Ancestral. Oracle, four cards, Time Walk down to three cards, Ancestral down to, yeah. So if I drew, there is a sequence there where I do lose. So, yeah. Okay, so definitely Dark Ritual there. Okay. Because my opponent only had one card in hand, so.
uh oracle three four cards time walk three okay oh wait no I, I can beat that with just just by having oracle on two okay so my, the way i built my pile i never i never lose to surgical because i have two hits right all right well good pile we should have cast our ritual <laughs> all right we did it breakered in to the top eight at eighth the highest breakers among the four twos. Uh, thanks to all of our previous opponents who won in the last round. I don't think we would have gotten there if each and every one of them did not win. So, a little lucky. A little lucky. What's not lucky is 8th has to play first. And first place is the undefeated Jeskai player who beat us in Swiss. So, yeah. We actually won the die roll because, for whatever reason, Magic Online cannot implement play draw based on seeding. So, here we go. All right, I have Sapphire, Force, Fluster, Necro, Oracle. Hmm. I don't particularly see this hand as good. Because it really doesn't do anything. And I don't think having a pile of Forces and Flusters is actually what I want against my opponent's deck. I do need a force to beat their forces, but I, I I just don't see this hand doing anything. If this hand had a dark, I guess it's like a dark ritual away. Like if this was a cantrip or had a dark was a dark ritual, then obviously we can keep it on the back of Necro Fluster. But like we're two land drops away from Necro, and we are, are like we can draw Moxin. Don't I just don't really like this hand. I don't know. There's like certainly some upsides to keeping this hand, but it just feels really tough. I mean, if we hit Dark Ritual or Lotus or Dem then it's pretty good. I'm going to keep this hand, but I don't think I'm like super thrilled about it. There's, like, a lot of downside to mulliganing hard to an early combo against my opponent, especially because past-the-turn piles are susceptible to Wasteland and Ragavan, and they play, like, six forces. Uh, whereas our hand isn't really at in danger. We don't have to fetch and get Wastelanded. We have the ability to Flusterstorm an Ancestral or a Brainstorm. We can force a Lavinia with Flusterstorm back up. I don't think this is bad. I, but it's not it's definitely not what exactly what we're looking for for sure. We could totally hard cast Oracle if we really needed to. Another pearl opener. Is it gonna be turn one Lavinia again? Turn one Ragavan. I think I'm going to force this. I think this is acceptable. It's not not thrilled about the outcome of that, but I, I, I think it's fine. Doomsday. That is definitely on the list of things I did not want to draw. It's pretty I pretty much wanted to draw any other card besides Doomsday. Hmm. I don't know. I could have let Monkey resolve, but it just feels bad. Maybe I just just a mulligan. It's really hard to mulligan that hand, but like if my opponent is playing, yeah. I get, hmm. It's definitely a mulliganable hand, but mulliganing on the play, I guess a six four stack. Don't know. Second monkey. I mean, this one has to go. This one has to. This one has to be allowed. Ruby. Definitely not ideal. Ooh. 
my opponent knew I was drawing what Doomsday because they they bobbled me. Hmm. Not much I can really do here. A, a good draw would have been like top. Sensei's top would have been a really nice draw. Yog will. So they could cast Yog will and get Bobble land. It's pretty good. Ragavan is probably only really good against Doomsday in the format. Yeah. I would, I would say that's probably true. I really don't think there are other decks that Ragavan is good against, so... Uh, so if I fluster this, yeah, I think that looks fine. It's just value, denial. Obviously, they got that card for free, but it did cost them three mana and a treasure. So I think it's okay. I mean, we're, we're super far behind in this game. It's going to be very challenging. Yeah, going off. Storm off. I don't even know if Dark Rit wins this game, to be perfectly honest. And we probably have to cast Necro. Yeah, I mean, my, my opponent is the Jeskai control player, basically the only one who does play that deck uh, to a very high uh, win rate. Probe. I'm going to probe. Wasteland, Brainstorm, Expressive Iteration. Man, I should just freaking... I should just keep... I should just... Just mulligan. How can you justify keeping these hands? They just have zero counter spells, and they know I'm on Doomsday Tinker. They just don't keep hands with forces. It's crazy. I mean, I'm going to lose. But not me is right. This player just doesn't keep hands with forces. I, I just, how can you do that? You just concede? You're like, fine, I'm dead? It's crazy. You just hope your opponent doesn't keep a... Oh my god. All right, all right let's just go next. Is there any point in playing this out? They vamp. They no. Let's just let's concede. All right. Um, same thing as last time, where we board in fatal push and mind break trap, and we board out. Uh, what was it? Mystical and something. I don't know. Like. Do they do that against Jewel as well? Like, what was the other card we were boarding out here? It was Mana Crypt, right? Yeah. I just, I mean, uh, personally, I don't think I would ever keep a hand like that against Doomsday or, or Tinker or both. <laughs> but maybe that's why they're a super powerful magician and I'm not, so... Yeah, I guess I should just mulligan. I think Monkey is an incredibly weak card. I think, like I said, it's only good in this matchup. I don't think Monkey is a really a vintage playable card. Here we go again.
I'm not casting turn turn one doomsday with this hand. I'm keeping this hand, but I'm not casting turn one doomsday with this hand. I'm just gonna cast. Um, I'm gonna fetch basic and cast preordain in top. Actually, I'm gonna fetch underground to see. Ancestral. Fetch. I guess I want both of those. And I'm not gonna play around Mind Break Trap. Is it correct to use this Ancestral on their upkeep with this Lotus Petal or hold it so that next turn I can go Doomsday with Ancestral? I mean, I have a top, so I don't need it. So I'm just going to cast Ancestral to target me. Force. Okay. Why did they draw it in the opposite order? It's so weird. Wasteland. I feel like that's okay though, right? Wait, canister's already done? Well, welcome canister viewers. Sorry to hear about your top eight match, but congrats on your top eight. We are currently also playing in the top eight. We are against Jeskai and we're playing Tinker Doomsday. I'd like to keep all these blue cards and simply find the cards we need to go for Doomsday next turn, though we won't be able to... Oh. So... Yeah. So... I can draw my Dark Ritual, fetch for a blue card source, Dark Ritual, Doomsday... But there's no winning line here, right? So if I Dark Ritual, if I draw and I get Dark Ritual Doomsday and I have one land in a Preordain, all I can draw is one card. And because I don't have a Gush, I don't think there's a winning line. So maybe the play is simply... Play Flooded Strand, pass, draw second Flooded Strand, and go for no ritual, Doomsday, gush on top with top, and go for the top line with Force Misstep back up. I think that's better. I'm going to do that line instead. I think that line's better. Doesn't run into like... I guess I technically don't have to cast Preordain, but... Because my opponent doesn't play Flusterstorm or Mindbreak Trap, I don't think waiting actually hurts us. No, I think you're just wrong again. Uh, I will just misstep this, though, and just go for it with Flusterstorm back up. Or, sorry, with Force back up. Yeah. No, he, he doesn't play Pyro Fluster, only plays Forces. Or it doesn't play Mind Break Traps, either. Alright, we're just gonna go for Doomsday Kill with one Fluster, with one Force back up. They have to have double negate, double force. 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 Okay, so we just go for the gush pile. So the pile is gush, lotus, Ancestral Sapphire Oracle.
So this pile, we have doom, we have top on top. We draw. Oh, actually, we have pearl. So maybe we don't even have to do that. Maybe what we can do is float a spin, draw with top. No, draw with top. No, I don't think there's a way I can stack it where I can spin the top away, right? So if I stack a spin, draw with top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stack a spin, draw with top. Let the top, uh, let the gush go to my hand. Put top two to the bottom. Cast gush for uh, Lotus Oracle. Okay, so I can make a different pile. I can make a different pile. So this can let me make a two Oracle pile, I believe. So if I stack a spin, I draw my gush, I put the top three from the top, and then I gush into Lotus Oracle, and it gets countered at the end. Then I draw for top, top and it hit my second oracle probe doesn't do anything so this is the new pile we're going to make the new pile so it's going to be gush lotus i need a second oracle and i think i'm going to put a an uh, island in case my opponent Wastelands me. I guess a sapphire would do the same. Seems fine though. All right, so I do this pile and I put gush lotus. So island, uh, island oracle gush. So iron oracle oracle lotus gush. Draw into gush. Spit the spin. Yeah. Okay, we're doing this. Oh fuck! Because I don't, uh, because I don't have ancestral, I don't go deep enough. All right. Well, I fucked up, man. I did. I have to dig one deeper because of top, which is why I make the other pile the other way. All right. Well, fucked up again. All right. So, what's now the best way of doing this? Yeah, I should have just gone with my original pile, which would have lost to a trap at the end or something, but it was fine. So my best path forward now is... I think I just put Gush on top. And that protects me from Wasteland or whatever. I know I had the right pile and then I fucked it up. It's my own fault. I just like saw this spin thing and I realized I could put a second oracle in my pile. I mean, I have Dash Ragavan beat with Pearl or whatever. It it needed to be. It needed to be. Um. It needed to just have a probe in it instead of an island. This is fine. This also wins with double Oracle on this turn. Or oh, sorry, yeah, this also wins with double Oracle on this turn. So I can play top, draw top, and play second Oracle here. Okay. Uh, it, like, most of the time, if you fuck up these piles, it's still fine, but it's just less good. Like, here, if they, if they like, Pyro or Force or, or Swords this, I can play top with my off-color Moxin and draw my second Oracle and play Oracle with blue-blue anyways, so it's fine. Uh, but what I wanted to do, so the so the pile that you normally do, if there's no pearl there, if you're tapped out of mana and you have Sensei's top, the pile is uh, uh, crazy taught me the pile, which is uh, Lotus, Gush, Lotus Gush, Ancestral Sapphire, 
Oracle. And that way you gush into Lotus top, replay top, cast, uh, draw into Ancestral, Ancestral, and then go Sapphire Oracle. The reason I didn't do that is because I had the spin mana so I can actually spin my top to the bottom. And so what I actually get to do is take the Sapphire and the Ancestral out of the pile. And instead I get to put an, a probe and a second Oracle in the pile. And so what this is, is I tap my top, hold priority, or uh, spin my top, hold priority, tap my top, drawing into Gush, spin my, uh, uh, spin my top to below here. Uh, and that way I gush into, wait, does that actually work? I gush into Lotus Probe. I probe for a new top. I play Lotus and top and then draw into Oracle. So I guess it does work, right? Okay, interesting enough. Um, but the only reason I didn't do my initial pile is because I reconsidered after I saw that I had a extra colorless mana to rearrange my top, which makes me, I think makes me more redundant in getting a second Oracle. So. Okay. Uh, let's go again. All right. On the draw against Unlucky Monkey quarterfinals, I've got <laughs> a classic Tinker Citadel hand. Mulligan. Keep. Uh, I can just get rid of Dark Ritual, right? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. No, he had a force. We had to force a force in that game. I mean, you were right this time, Houston. You, you, you correctly evaluated we needed to put a probe into the new pile. You were totally right. I just, uh, I had to think about that one on the fly. I hadn't come up yet, and I made it a made a mistake. So, didn't cost us. So let's do it. Yo, what's up, out? GG's. Those were some brutal games. <laughs> I loved the double grief one. It was brutal. Oh, okay. I'm just going to go um, Sapphire Preordain, and that way if they uh, Wasteland me, I can, I can cast Ancestral in response, and if they force the Ancestral, I can daze it and bring back my Wasteland mana. Doomsday Flusterstorm. Am I stupid if I want to put Doomsday on the bottom? It just feels like that doesn't really what we really want. I think I'm going to keep Flusterstorm. Because we're not really close to casting Doomsday. I think I'm going to bottom Doomsday and keep Flusterstorm is my instinct on this one. But the first part of this game is going to be about resolving my spells... Like, if my opponent does nothing here, I'm not casting Ancestral. Is this Monkey? I don't think we're fighting over Monkey. Yeah, I'm just going to wait on this Ancestral now. I really want to draw a land is what I actually want to draw, right?
think I should cast Priord in and try to draw a land and a top card that I don't care about. Or at least stack this in a way where Monkey doesn't matter. Okay, so I don't really want to give them Merchant Scroll, though. Uh, so I guess we'll just draw this land, and then we'll have a blind monkey hit. And we'll just go Ancestral. We'll just wait on the Ancestral. I'm going to have to crack before the monkey hits, though. Well, no, I bottomed the Merchant Scroll, so I don't have to crack before the monkey hits. Okay. So many lands... Right? I bottomed. One top, one bottom. Okay. Your monkey connects. Hopefully they hit Doomsday. <laughs> or something like that. They hit Polluted Delta. Okay. I'm looking for a good avenue to resolve this Ancestral, but my, my window may have just sailed, so... Time walk. All right, I'm going to cast in this this window here and see how it goes. While my opponent has other spells on the stack for my Flusterstorm. If they hard cast negation here, I have Daze, which is pretty strong as well. Or I can just fluster both of their spells, which is probably better. So... Let's see what happens. My opponent is definitely incentivized to let this resolve because I'm very much representing the fact that I have Flusterstorm or Mindbreak Trap or both. Oh man, these matches are so close. Oh, these this games, these games have been a lot closer than the, the first match we played versus them. If we can draw a Black Lotus, we can just jam a Citadel as well. My opponent only has three cards in hand. Okay. We're one mana from Citadel. We cannot play Fluster successfully here. And I'm not forcing this. So I think... What if they draw Wasteland? Like, they clearly don't have Wasteland in hand, but what if they draw Wasteland? I mean, we can fluster days, but that doesn't put us... I don't think that's good. I don't think fluster days is good here, though. We are pretty far from using fluster storm. We are pretty far from using fluster storm on our turn. Can just let that... If I go to my turn, I play my, my C and I cast time walk, and then I... Draw a land and I ritual force. Yeah. I think this is fine, actually. I don't think this Flusterstorm is getting better. I think my opponent knows I have Flusterstorm. So I think it's better to just cash in the good value now and go for something on my turn here. We have Time Walk into Land Dark Rituals Citadel or Petal. That works too. Uh, I am going to Time Walk first though. Yeah, I'm going to Time Walk first. Uh, you think Fluster and then Daze? That exposes me to some other cards. Like, it's not a bad line, but I think that exposes me in different in different ways. Uh, like, my opponent isn't someone who's playing Fluster Swarms of their own, so. Oh, maybe they are. Maybe this is Pyroblast. Interesting. Uh, that Daze line would have exposed me. Well, maybe they wouldn't because I would have tapped out. 
Um, I think we're okay here with letting this happen. And then hopefully this one monkey shot doesn't ruin our lives. And then we go for Citadel next turn. Because if I force this and they have forces, blue card is their last two cards, it is just too bad. Yeah, but we're beating Hardcast Force. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. Depending what I draw for turn, I can also like Merchant Ancestor, uh, Merchant uh, Gush. This Mystical, that'd be crazy. I don't think I, I drew Petal that I, I didn't have to, one, two, three, four. I didn't have to go for Time Walk. Oh, it's mystical. All right. We just force it, right? Not the mystical, whatever they get off the mystical. They got Ancestral. So I have to hope this monkey doesn't hit my own Fluster Storm here. <laughs> I mean, they could have Hardcast Negation after this as well, actually. This could be really, really bad for me. If their hand was Mystical and Negation, it was really hard for me to play through it, though, anyways. Though, I guess I would have beaten it, just not had a land drop. Brainstorm? Monkey's so good. Yeah, I think this game is toast. I think this game is toast. I'm just going to let it all resolve and then go for my play and hope it works. Yeah, I mean, I made a guess I made a greedy line. Oh, no, if they had Pyroblast's forced blue card, that wouldn't have worked anyways. No, it doesn't work anyways. Not me, because if they have forced Pyroblast, I still I still lose. Right. So. This is Lavinia. I mean, if they had just Pyroblast. I mean, we're just super dead. Yeah, but they... Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think I'm always making the time walk line. Like, they're way more likely to have negation than they are to have Pyroblast. They have four negations in their deck and two Pyroblasts. We, I mean, I lost this game, unfortunately. I don't hate the way I played it, but maybe maybe the time walk was was losing, yeah. I don't know. I really wanted to get the land drop, but maybe I didn't need to. I mean, I think my opponent has something, and... The only outcome where it's good for me is if they have, like, Pyroblast and don't cast it or something like that. Is Monkey worth forcing? No. You just live with the RNG. Not in this game where I'm, like, not trying to Doomsday, really. Monkey is just, like, it's good against our deck, but it's, like, it's just an RNG card. Like, sometimes it'll hit your Ancestral, and sometimes it won't. All right, they had Force Negation. Yeah, all right. So this game is toast. Uh, not really much we can do anymore here i don't not even know what we can play to uh we can play to exactly fatal push i mean yeah i mean we throw the game into the into the you know if we force the pyro we throw the game into do they have force if they do we win if they do they don't we lose but we weren't in a situation where it was a oh, do or die because my opponent had two cards and a monkey. The problem, the, the situation that, the reason it became do or die is because one of my opponent's remaining cards was mystical for ancestral, right? Like, I think forcing the pyro there is, it, it just goes all in on a spot where I didn't feel like we needed to go all in. Like, I felt like we were in a winning or slightly winning position 
the mystical was the card that changed that equation. Right? I don't I don't know. I, I, I think it wasn't uh I don't know. I, I, I don't think forcing the py the pyroblast was a play that I'd like to make. No, I'd rather them draw the Ancestral and I just force the Ancestral. The, I just need the monkey not to hit. <laughs> the monkey hit my the Brainstorm and I lost. Right? Like, I, I mean, if, my, if, my, if the monkey hits a land, I win. Like, it's just, it's that simple. Unless their last card is Negation, which it probably was. So, like, it's tough. Do I survive if I block? No. All right. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of different choices I can make in that game. I don't really hate the choices I did make. I just think they got punished. Like, if I look, This is good. I like this. I definitely don't like the idea of fluster and then days. I like days and then fluster. So the only real thing is here, instead of playing time walk, we can go ritual, petal, citadel, and if my opponent's cards are... Yeah, I mean... Fluster into days guarantees that I actually get the spell countered. Whereas if I go days into fluster, it, 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 uh, sorry, fluster the other way around. If I go, if you do it the other way around, you're not guaranteed to always counter it. They can have stuff, but if you do it the way I did it, the, the fluster storm is always guaranteed to work. If their last cards are four we end up in a better spot. How does this end up in a better spot? If we force the pyro, we end up with absolutely nothing, right? Like how, how does this end up in a better spot? Because they have zero cards, but they're still they're still like monkey plus they're still monkey plus no cards and we have no cards. That's not a better spot. Like, I don't think I'm supposed to play around Mystical. I think I'm supposed to play around Blue Card Force. But, 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 but we're not dead. If, if their cards are Blue Card Force and it's not Mystical, they go to their turn, it's one monkey hit, we untap, we cast Citadel, and we force their Force. I, I, you're just wrong. If we're playing around exactly mystical force pyro, then you're correct, but we're not. We're playing around blue card force because playing around mystical doesn't make sense. I, I yeah, I I think you're definitely wrong here. It might be it might be right that we should, but it, the the reasoning there is not correct. We don't end up in a more favorable position. We only end up in a more favorable position if their card is exactly mystical. Like, there's no other blue card besides ancestral, which they would have already cast, that ends up in a in a position like this. That ended up that ended up being in. Of course, if they have blue card force, monkey miss. We untap and we cast citadel with force backup against their blue card force.
what 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 what's what's hard what's the hard part to understand about that? What? No, my citadel is gone. Like I can't I can't Oh, you're saying you think they're gonna counter back? They're not gonna counter back. Are you nuts? If I force here, they just let it resolve. I go to my turn, they force my payoff. That's crazy. They would never counter back. I'm talking that I need to have this force to resolve my citadel. I draw land for turn. I see no reason to cast walk here. There's a very completely valid reason to cast walk here is so that my citadel has a land drop to give. I don't draw... Uh, uh. Oh, I draw a brainstorm. I don't think that matters. Like, it's a brainstorm. Like, it's still good, but it doesn't matter. It's the same sequence, like... If I don't cast Time Walk, I go for Citadel with no land drop to give. I uh, I wouldn't say that. I yeah, I just disagree on that statement. I don't I don't think I don't think it's hopelessly optimistic for my opponent to who has counter magic in their hand to untap draw no card and have monkey hit a blank. My deck is full of blanks. I, I disagree. That seems like a very off evaluation to me of what my opponent's deck is doing. I, maybe. I don't know. It was like pretty hopeless when they revealed Brainstorm. I think it's better to just let them draw all the cards and try to resolve your Citadel. Like, if they don't draw Lavinia, we just untap. Like, they have to have double force, right? Funky. So, you're, you're playing... Like, if they don't draw Lavinia here, my opponent needs to have double force of will. Which they, which they actually do have, I believe, because I think they did force pitch force. So, even if Lavinia was on their blue card, they did have double force of will, but... Like, my plan here is just, like, let them resolve these spells to go to my turn and hope they have one force when I go Citadel force, right? I think that's fine. Uh, it's it's possible I just don't care about the land drop and I'm just supposed to go for Citadel here, in which case I force they force they pyroblast uh, sorry, I they 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 force, I force, they pyroblast, and I end up with uh, a merchant scroll for gush. And then we just is merchant scroll for gush going to be monkey on board plus top decks? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's maybe that's better. It's not unreasonable to say that's better. And maybe it's just super greedy to play Time Walk first. I kind of forgot about Pyroblast, to be honest. Didn't really play around Pyroblast in a meaningful way. But... I guess I was kind of baited into not thinking about Pyroblast because of the way I played the Flusterstorm turn. Because they can't Pyroblast this Flusterstorm. I I think it was. I think their hand was Mystical Force of Negation Pyroblast. And I think that's highly likely. Well, anyways. 
you can make slight variations to this play and you might win some of the games and you might lose some of the games and it all depends on what cards your opponent has in hand um i don't know i don't hate the way i played this out i hate the, uh i'm kind of sad about the pile mistake here but we had a good idea and then in game one what happened in game one we kept a bad hand kept a bad hand in game one yeah this hand is not capable just mulligan this hand all right it's a tough matchup. My opponent's playing eight forces and two pyros, plus Wastelands, Bragavans, and Lavinias, so it's definitely tough. And I don't think we played perfect, so happens. Uh, in terms of the deck, the only thing I'm interested in, in super changing is maybe taking one Preordain out and playing one Dress down, but I'm not even sure that's actually good. Uh, it's just a thought. For the most part, I think this deck is pretty well constructed. I think we're doing enough with our off-color Moxon now. Um, we can maybe iron out some sideboard slots and see if, like, these are the correct removal spells. Is Opposition Agent better than Shieldred? Uh, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. You don't, I think every list that plays Doomsday that is not playing Lotus Petal is wrong. So I'm very, very, very certain that Lotus Petal is correct. And I think every, and I think a lot of the Doomsday lists that are currently being played right now are just incorrect. It feels like the Doomsday list... I don't want to play Chain of Vapor. I would rather never play Chain of Vapor if possible. I think that the Doomsday lists right now are that are that have been meta for years are very much based on the Discover End style of Doomsday, and I think Discover End plays a bit of a risk averse style in the way he builds his decks, and I don't I don't think that's the best way to play it. Um, I would be putting Pedal in any Doomsday deck. So. All right, uh, we're going to end it here. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of this deck and or just normal Doomsday on my stream in the future as I prepare and learn uh, prior to Eternal Weekend. Um, what else? New vintage content, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I will see you then.